Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So welcome to your weekly Twin Flame reading, Twin Flame check-in, whatever, however you want to mention it. Um, so this is going to be a general energy reading, okay, for the Twin Flame Collective. Now, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. This is a mirror reading. So as I've stated in the past, um, if you're new, you may not know this, or if you are newer, you may not quite get it yet, but the readings here that I do for the Twin Flame Collective are mirror readings, so I use two decks to symbolize the energies of the Divine Masculine and the Divine Fe Feminine, respectively, and I see how they may be mirroring each other. But uh, I do recommend that the focus of this reading be with intentions of understanding not only what's going on with your counterpart in the physical world, or, well, not only that, but also trying to understand what's going on with the masculine and feminine energies within. Yes, that is the primary goal of this reading, okay? Uh, because it is the month of February, and February is a bunch is a month of love, I am running a mirror reading special, 20% uh, off of a mirror reading. Now you can use that to get an idea of where you and say your twin flame are in your journey. You could also use it for anything else. Maybe if you're connecting with a soulmate and you want to understand where you stand versus where they stand in the relationship, or you could also use it to see where you are in relation to your own inner divine masculine or divine feminine energies yes so that will be 20 percent off of a mirror reading so if you would like to take advantage of that go ahead and email me divine conversations 2711 at gmail.com and i will get you all set up yeah go ahead and follow me on instagram as well at divine underscore conversations and you can also follow me on in uh, uh oops facebook there it is at divine conversations 2711 okay so with that said um getting into the message for the twin flame collective this week um it's very much focused around collective consciousness uh as i was meditating before i started the reading um, and it was just connect, connecting to uh, the collective. Um, uh, spirit kept bringing forward collective, collective, as in collective consciousness. That's where many of us are moving into, especially when you work on balancing the masculine and feminine energies within, which basically is the goal here. As I come to understand it, now I've been doing twin flame readings for about a year now, um, professionally here on YouTube and all that. But as I've come to understand it on my own journey, the twin flame situation is not necessarily about that external romantic partner. It's actually more about the journey towards reuniting humanity with love, with the cosmic heart, okay? Um, and that's unconditional divine love. And twin flames are here as the front runners, as the first responders the ones who are leading the charge in reconnecting humanity to the cosmic heart chakra, you, I guess you could say, um, reconnecting humanity to unconditional love. And when you get to that state, well, you get to that state by working on the union between masculine and feminine energies within, which ultimately, eventually, in some, at some point throughout your journey, it will bring you into union with a divine partner uh, most of us for most of us that is your twin flame for others of us it could be anyone um, it, it just it's more about the alignment less about the individual person so this is why spirit is bringing forward this message of collective consciousness for us collectively as twin flames because it's time for us to start really embodying that collective consciousness that unconditional love for humanity as a whole not just for this individual person that is perceived to be or is actually your twin flame in the physical realm now when you are working on the balance between masculine and feminine energy within you are in fact tapping into that collective consciousness many of us resonate with this new archetype um one person specifically emily of indigo moons healing hey boo um she has been doing uh the new archetype readings um and actually they have really been re resonating with me personally uh, and I have come to understand that I've been working on the balance of masculine and feminine for a long time. And actually, that ha I have been mentioning that in my readings for the twins for at least 
within four months or so of me doing these readings regularly for the Twin Flame Collective, I actively started consciously working on the balance between masculine and feminine energy within. And I later came to realize that that was me personally tapping into this brand new archetype that has been in the works of being developed. And now there are many more other individuals, a lot of people that follow me, a lot of people that follow Indigo Moons, a lot of people that even follow other readers out there have actively been working on this balance of masculine and feminine energy and have been actively tapping into this new archetype. This new archetype is all about the collective consciousness, yes? So spirit wants us to really start working on getting acclimated. You don't have to really dive in. You don't have to actively be feel like you are in it. It's more about just starting to wrap our heads around the collective consciousness. What does that mean? For starters, we can, you can start with saying, um, you know, whatever you're feeling, instead of just saying, oh, this is mine or, oh, this is my twins. Or, it's more about the fact that whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're feeling, whatever you are purging, uh, whatever memories are coming back up, whatnot, whatever it is you are dealing with purposely has a place within the collective consciousness. And as twin flames, we are here to help lead the charge in healing and purging on behalf of the collective. So instead of just looking at, at looking at these situations from an individual uh, point of view or perspective, it is encouraged that we start to see the how this is affecting the collective, how this is a part of the collective consciousness and what we can do on behalf of the collective to heal that. Because ultimately, when you work on healing the collective, you also heal yourself. Why? Because you're part of the collective. So uh, that's what many of us, especially as empathic beings, um, those of us who have, are really connected with our empathic abilities and are very, very strongly gifted in that sense, we often pick up on the collective conscious situations. And so as we move forward from this point, Spirit really would like us to work on that. Okay, so that was the collective message, um, general message for the collective. Uh, don't worry if, I'm, if anyone would like to put in a timestamp, go ahead. But I do recommend that people listen to that because if you really do resonate with this, that's something you need to hear. It's a message for you. Okay. So without further ado, we are going to get into the reading. Uh, please keep in mind that this is a general reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, go ahead and email me. Keep in mind, I am running a mirror reading discount for the month of February, 20% uh, off a mirror reading. If you would like one, go ahead and email me. All right, let's get to it, guys. Ah. All righty. Let me just get the camera right here. Boop. Okay, here we go. Everybody settle in, take a deep breath. Let's all connect. Time is an illusion. Space is an illusion. So go ahead and just connect. Yeah? Take a deep breath. And release. And, and work on connecting. Focus on connecting to the collective consciousness here. All right? Excellent. Here we go, everyone. Sorry, I probably should have done this before, but I'm I'm wanting to straighten up all my cards here. <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. <sighs> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us an accurate representation of the energies of the Divine Masculine Collective, represented by the deck on the left and the Divine Feminine Collective, represented by the deck on the right. And please give us an accurate representation of where their energies are in relation to the Twin Flame journey and in relation to each other and how they may be mirroring and or interacting with each other. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to get started by reshuffling the energies for the Divine Masculine. Now, as I was channeling the energies here and um, focusing them into the cards for our messages for this week, Spirit did say that Divine Union is upon us. That can look in many, many different ways. First, it can look like uh, actual physical couples coming into union with each other. 
And if you fall into that category, congratulations. I am very, very happy for you. I wish you both the best and I wish you, you know, safe travels in your journeys moving forward. For others, this looks like the union of masculine and feminine energy within. Now, the first thing that Spirit is wanting me to say about that is that it can be pretty tumultuous at first, all right? It's definitely a brand new perspective, okay? And you might have some ego flares um, in, in the sense of pride and whatnot, but that's just the initial onset of the union focus. From there, it is you are going to need to work through that egoic um, projection and really come into the collective consciousness, okay? One thing that Spirit does want me to say is that just because you have achieved a certain level of, of divine masculine and divine feminine uh, balance within, that does not make you any better than anyone else that may not be in that position, all right? There's definitely some of that ego coming through. But ultimately, that will subside. And then you have a greater sense of union within. All right. One more shuffle for the Divine Masculine Energies. Boop. All right. Mas divine Masculine, your energies are set. Now getting into the Divine Feminine energies here. Uh, for the Divine Feminine, I'm hearing corporeal existence. So many of you are really, at see, it's, it's really interesting because the Divine Masculine energies have really been working on integrating or accepting the Divine Feminine energies within into their lives, right? They're working on integrating that. Divine, divine Feminine, you are working on integrating your Divine Masculine energies. And so because of that, your focus is on your corporeal existence, your 3D reality, what it is you truly want to experience in the physical realms, okay? Really grounding yourself in the physical realm. So for a lot of you, that really can symbolize major, major, major changes, which is where the energies of being in this two of pentacles state or the in-between worlds energy has been coming from. And that in-between worlds, in between realities, whatnot, whatever. That's been a message that's been coming out a lot lately. And this is why, because you are integrating your masculine, your divine masculine energies. And so that is causing you to take a, an extra focused look on what your life is in the physical sense, what you do like it, what you don't like about it and where you wanna be going, okay? Last shuffle here for the divine feminine energies. And we're gonna cut the deck and then we're gonna get started. All righty. Divine Feminine, overall energy. Hoo, 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 hoo. You got the devil. Oh, didn't see that one coming. Now, but see, but this actually it does, it kind of does make sense because the devil here is symbolizing the energies of conformity, of codependency, of addiction, whatever. Yes, it can symbolize that. But what I'm getting here is any sort of addictions or any sort of codependency comes is is a coping mecha mechanism or a coping method okay it's a coping method for the lack of authenticity in your life and so this is really becoming the focus here this also is symbolizing toxic relationships that are around you um this divine masculine energy that is really starting is, is definitely on the rise as well as the divine feminine is really causing you to question a lot of the situations the circumstances and the relationships around you are these helpful helpful for me are they healthy for me uh, uh, is this just rooted in codependency this also has roots in jobs lines of work career choices some of you really want to make a change but you feel chained to it but that really is an illusion there because the beauty of the devil, just like the eight of swords, to be honest, but the beauty of the devil is these people don't have to be under the devil's control if they don't want them to be, if they don't want to be themselves. All they have to do is just 
remove themselves from the situation. Now, yes, just like the Eight of Swords, that is easier said than done. And that does not mean that the devil's not going to come back around and try and coax you back into this life that you are leaving behind. That absolutely could be what's happening. Also, many of you are in, in yes, in between worlds and the devil is trying to, in essence, pull you back into where you once were, okay? And you're having to fight against that. You, <laughs> yes, you have the hermit, you have the 10 of pentacles, and you also have the 10 of wands, divine feminine. I mean... <laughs> Number one, you've got 1010 10 right there. 1010 10 has been a repeating number. It's been a repeating number for me lately. Um, it's, all, it's a number all about completion. So the question here is, how far have you come and how far are you willing to go? Or where do you want to go? Or how much of these burdens that you've been carrying are worth actually carrying let me try and adjust my my light here so you guys can see the cards better um all right and you have the hermit now the hermit juxtaposition just excuse me juxtapositioned against the devil is saying you are absolutely in a process now you have been you're not this is not new this is something that's actually been happening for a few months now um, but now it's really coming to a head. You're in the process of finding your own inner light, finding your own inner truth in face of the devil who really just wants you, wants to mask that for you. Does not want you to, to, to find that inner light because once you find that inner light, the devil has no control over you any longer. Now, this does not mean that the devil is not coming back around trying to push your buttons, trigger you, this, that, and the third. So I guess you could say that the devil is your best, your best ally here, because if you really want to be solid and rooted in who you truly are in what your light stands for and shining your light and being your own authentic version in leading the way for others to do the same, the devil is coming around to test your strength, to test your foundation, to test your faith. So in reality, the devil really kind of is your best friend here, isn't he? Wow. That's different. <laughs> but honestly, the devil, if you really, if you look at it the right way, the devil actually is only helping you. Only helping you be stronger in your own inner light with the hermit here, okay? Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Wands. The Ten of Pentacles is saying that, yeah, for a lot of us, for a lot of you, you've put in a lot, invested a lot of time and energy into wherever it is you are right now. And... For some of you, I do feel a bit of disappointment because it's like, holy shit, I've put in so much time, so much effort, and so much work into this, and I don't even want to be here anymore. This doesn't resonate with me anymore. This is actually something I never really wanted to do in some cases. So now you're faced with letting go of the burdens. And you know what's so funny? The song Man in the Mirror, Michael Jackson's song Man in the Mirror just popped into my head. So many of you are going through that kind of situation here. You can't, you can't, honestly, you can't change the world around you if you're still carrying all of these burdens, or can you? If you're still living your life in a way that no longer resonates with you, is tiring, is burdensome, is exhausting, isn't allowing you to really be truly happy the way you want to be. So obviously, you got to start with who? The man or woman in the mirror with the hermit here. It's the change that you want to see in the world has to start with you. And that's what you're doing. Again, Spirit just said, corporeal existence. What is your life? What does your life represent? Can you look yourself in the mirror with the Ten of Pentacles and say, I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of where I am. I'm proud of how far, to, how far I've come. And I am very eager to continue. Ten of Pentacles. And the Hermit. Yes? Excellent. So, getting into your first set of surrounding energies for the Divine Feminine Collective, you have... Four of Pentacles. It's time to start letting go of some things, Divine Feminine. And it, it's it's it, it's interesting because it's I, it's not like you haven't been working on this. 
In many cases, you have. And it may not necessarily be that you've been holding on to something for dear life and been refusing to let go. I don't think that's necessarily the case. For some of you, yes, that is the case. But for others of you, it's about what this is saying, especially in relation to the Hermit card here. This is like you're finally starting to realize what it is you either need to let go of or can let go of. For, some, for a lot of you, for a lot of you, the need or, or not letting go of this, whatever this, is, whatever this represents for you is because it gave you some sort of sense of security or sense of stability. But now that's changing because you're realizing that that actually, in many cases, is a, was, yes, a part of your foundation, but that was a foundation or security blanket, we'll say, that was actually holding you back. And so now you actually may be in the best energetic space to really let go of it now because you understand your corporeal existence differently. Okay. Four of pentacles is coupled with, yep, the seven of pentacles. You understand your corporeal existence differently. Reaping what you, the energies of reaping what you've sown. Okay. That's. That's quite fantastic, Divine Feminine. I mean, think about it, especially with this Ten of Pentacles and the Hermit here. In the face of all this devil energy that's around us, you really have come a long way, haven't you? So now, now that you have this deeper understanding with the Hermit here, you can finally start to say, okay, I can let go of this. I can let go of this. I can let go of this. Ooh, I can definitely let go of that. You know what? I might hold on to this one right here, but I'm going to keep my eye on it because I'm not quite sure yet. Be careful, Divine Feminine, because honestly, if you're not quite sure, if anything you're looking at in your life and you're questioning whether or not it could be let go of, this could be a belief system. This doesn't have to be uh, physical items or physical circumstances or phys just like people, friendships, whatever, relationships. This could be thoughts beliefs okay if anything gives you a sort of any sort of inkling towards eh, i don't know if i want to deal with that any longer cut it out just cut it out because it would be better to let go of it now see the value in it later and change how you approach it given your new point of view later on down the road than to keep it now and allow it to fester and create even more of a problem later on. Does that make sense? I hope so. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Divine Feminine, we have <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune. Excellent. But you are absolutely in control here, okay? You're not in control of the fact that the wheel is turning. The wheel is gonna turn regardless, whether you are consciously aware of it or not, but you absolutely are in control in terms of your, your vibration in relation to the wheel. Your, your vibration will either dictate whether you're going to continue to get more of what you desire, more of what you actually want, more of what makes you happy because you're in vibrational alignment to it, or your vibration can switch and now you can get start getting the opposite. Now you can start getting more of that contrast to learn from. Do you really want more of that? I don't think so. So keep your vibration right. And there is no set formula for that. Okay? That your your ideal vibration is of your own choosing and your own making. No one else can set that up for you. All right? So that's really why this hermit energy is so incredibly important for you to be aware of, to behold on your own. No one else can do this for you. Okay. Wheel of Fortune is coupled with oof, the Four of Cups. But this is absolutely a stark reminder, being very, very aware of how you could miss out on an opportunity. Some of you are actually missing an opportunity here because you're so stuck on what you might be losing, what might be leaving your life. But look at that cup that the universe is trying to hand you behind you there. 
it's got more of what you've ever dreamed of in it than any one of those three cups down there that you're so intently focused on. For others of you in the Divine Feminine Collective, this is a stark reminder to keep your vibration right. You're very much aware of the fact that you don't want to miss out on anything any longer. And the only reason you would be missing out is because you are not focused on your inner reality. That Ace of Cups represents your own cup of self-love here. And the more you go within, the more you connect with who you truly are, the more fulfillment you will achieve because fulfillment comes from within, okay? Now, I think I'm going to change the way I label this next set. Instead of saying the challenge, I think I want to refer to this as your advice in relation to these current energies surrounding you, okay? So let's do it that way. Your advice, Divine Feminine. Death. Spirit is advising you that you're going through a transition, so keep that in mind. Your advice here, and I guess you could say the challenge, sure, all right, that, 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 sure, all right, that makes sense too. But the challenge here, or your advice here, is to keep in mind that transformation is at hand, big time. This is beautiful, okay? And this is something we've been aware of for some time now, for quite a few months. We've all been going through a major transition. That actually, to be quite honest, on a collective scale, looks pretty much, looks the same. But then when you get into the individual aspects of it, it does have its variations. I cannot believe, I just did my nails last night and this red nail is already chipped. Already, sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> Death in your challenge or your advice column is coupled with the queen of wands. Corporeal existence divine feminine the queen of wands is the representation of the divine feminine in the major i'm sorry in the minor arcana whereas in the major arcana she would be the empress i see the queen of wands and the king of wands as the corporeal or the 3d representation of the divine masculine and the divine feminine in the twin flames so, so, uh, uh, collective or the twin flame situation you are going through a change a major transformation into more truth, authenticity, and integrity with the Queen of Wands. Fully stepping into more of your balanced and integrated power. That's beautiful, Divine Feminine. Your potential outcome or closing message right now in your current surrounding energies, you have ah, the Five of Cups. Okay, that makes sense. Because there are some things, there is some mourning here. There is a bit of death, but you see, you see, you've progressed from the four to the five. And so whereas the four, in the four of cups, these three cups here were still standing and you were still focused on them. But you had one cup that was being offered to you here by the universe. That's divine love. That's self-love, divine love and all that. Now you've progressed to the five of cups. So now those cups have spilled. Those three cups have spilled. But you notice here. You have more than just one cup behind you. You've got two cups now. Divine union. Balance between masculine and feminine. And when that happens, there are a lot of things that are no longer going to resonate with you. And thus, those three cups of the social atmosphere, you can say, represented by the three of cups, spill. So sure. Sure. There's going to be a period of mourning. You're going to have to grieve a little bit. Allow yourself to do it. But then turn around, pick up those two cups, and get a move on, right? Five of Cups is coupled with <laughs> the Queen of Cups. Emotional maturity, compassion, integrity is what Spirit just said. Intuition, psychic ability. Compassion, though. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing. For some of you in this in this situation right now, with whatever it is you're leaving behind, whatever, in this major transformation that you're going through, your emotions might be in an overdrive. Absolutely. With the Queen of Cups here. But I, I do want to say that's kind of a good thing. 
and you might be look, you might be like you might be screw face right now like what do you mean it's a good thing it sure doesn't feel good no okay i get that that makes sense but actually it is a good thing because it is it's a sign of empathy it's a sign of compassion because I really do feel like the energies that are represented by the five of cups here is not necessarily you mourning yourself just, or at least just for yourself. This would be you in your empathic nature, feeling the loss that other people are experiencing in whatever it is that's changing around you or them. Now, as the Queen of Cups, you have the ability to be there for them, to be of emotional support, even if it is just remotely, like not necessarily in their physical presence or without them consciously aware of your being a support system to them. And that is where the collective conscious is coming back into play. The Queen of Cups can absolutely represent, the Queen and the King actually, can absolutely represent uh, uh, awareness of the collective consciousness. So being a bit of a, an emotional support system for the collective as we all go through this change. Okay, that's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, now getting into the divine masculine energies here. Overall energy, we're starting you off with, haha, mirroring already in the same overall energy, not the same position, but you have the 10 of pentacles, divine masculine. And already this is saying to me, you are in the process of, yes, uh, working on your longevity, working on your money, but really taking into account what it is you're working towards. What are you, what are you striving towards? Is it really a waste of time or not? Strength. Oh, my goodness. More mirroring. Ten of wands. And again, more mirroring. Death. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. For some of you, for some of you, you're still, the strength card here is speaking to pride and ego. For some of you, you've been working very, very hard on something with the Ten of Pentacles, and you've been working on it for a long time. This could, this could be a family situation. The Ten of Pentacles does represent family, but it also can be something career-wise. The Ten of Pentacles uh, represents time, okay? And a lots of time and effort invested into something. This is something that is really burdensome for you, mainly because it lacks authenticity. True, the truest form of authenticity in your life, that would be ideal. And so thus, your pride and your ego gets into play and you're really pulling on your strength to see this through. For those of you that are still in this energy, it's not gonna last much longer. You're not gonna be able to do this much longer because of death. Now, please don't get, please, please. <laughs> please, this does not mean you're going to die. This does not mean that you will not be able to complete this task because you're going to die. No. But transformation is happening. Now, for others of you, you are realizing this and you're actively embracing this transformation. You're actively pulling on your strength and the abundance of the universe to release these burdens with the Ten of Wands and to go in a new direction that's more authentic to you. Ten of Pentacles, all right? Wow, that's so crazy. Look at all the mirroring already, guys. Wow. But you know what? This to me is speaking to how we are really moving into more of a balanced collective consciousness type of mentality inner union and this is exactly why spirit is saying inner union or divine union is upon us because we are all coming into this state of union with between masculine and feminine energies within at least i guess just for the people that i'm 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 channeling for if you like you can go ahead and consider yourself to be in this new archetype if you haven't checked out emily uh emily's videos emily is indigo moons healing check her out 
her collective her 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 um new archetype readings they may they may very well resonate with you okay moving forward with you divine masculine we've got in your first set of surrounding energies Ooh, the empress all right so check it out the empress the divine feminine energies are on the rise within you you are connecting with your divine feminine energies this is the bridge between the two of you so in this reading here this is the bridge that shows how the devil energy that is in the focus of the divine feminine collective right now is actively actively being worked through on an action-based level within the divine masculine collective the divine feminine energies or the abundance of the universe the empress energies is what is influencing all of what's going on in your life right now okay the empress is coupled with the five of swords good golly miss molly there is still some tension there is still some fighting ego battles there are a lot of divine masculine energies out there, those that resonate more with the divine masculine collective that are actively still trying to fight against the divine feminine, not really realizing that they are, as they fight against or, or, or hurt, damage the divine feminine, they actually only really damage themselves as well. On the other hand, there are some in the Divine Masculine Collective that are starting to become aware of how of, of this abusive energy towards the Divine Feminine and also towards themselves. This is mainly for those of you that are starting to understand how we are one, how we all have these energies within. And you're starting to see how this twisted masculine energy, this one-upmanship, this tit-for-tat, this eye-for-an-eye type of energy has been a detriment to all of us, not just those in the feminine camp. Okay. Oof, that's intense. Second set of surrounding energies for the divine masculine, you have the Knight of Cups. That's sweet. Hearts are opening up. The Knight of Cups has been coming out a lot lately, both in the collective readings that I've been doing online here on YouTube, for the personal readings I've been doing recently, even in the general readings I've been doing on Instagram, the Knight of Cups is showing up and that's all about the heart chakra awakening, the heart chakra opening. In spite of this five of swords energy, the heart chakra is opening up for you, Divine Masculine. This can really be very emotional for you. And we all know how emotions are not necessarily the, 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 the most comfortable thing for those who resonate more with masculinity. It's not the most comfortable thing for you guys to handle. But it's not something that you're incapable of handling. So I say that to say, this might be a little rough for you. Um, this might be pretty overwhelming for you. But that is such, I mean, the energy that I'm getting from that Knight of Cups is such a beautiful card. It's like so, such beautiful energy. It's embracing love. It's embracing unconditional love. It's embracing the heart chakra and all of the strength, the strength that resides within the heart when you balance the masculine and feminine energies, okay? Knight of Cups is coupled with, ooh, the Three of Cups. Mind, body, and spirit coming into balance here. This is what's allowing you to open up your heart chakra and live from a more authentic heart chakra spot. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your advice or challenge, we'll say. Haven't quite nailed down which one it is yet, but we'll see what we get for you, Divine Masculine. You have, oh... Oh, the Ten of Cups. <laughs> so this is more of a challenge here for you, Divine Masculine, because this is where you want to be. This is what you're striving towards. OK. 
okay? Ten of Cups is coupled with the Two of Pentacles. So yeah, Divine Masculine, you are in between worlds as well. In between the worlds of strictly focused on the Pentacles aspect of things here, corporeal existence, physical representation, status, money, career, everything that looks good in the, from the egoic point of view to actually moving into this. Less about physical representation, more about what actually just makes you happy. What makes your family happy? You, you know, we don't need so much to be happy. We don't need a bank account with millions of dollars in it. We don't need a fancy home with three car with a three car garage and all kinds of luxurious, fancy, frou frou shit to be happy. So, what is it that actually makes you happy? What is it that actually makes your family happy? Focusing on that. Coming into the realm of reality in which that is idealized, not this. The money, the physical representation. That's beautiful. Your potential outcome or closing message here, Divine Masculine, you have. Woohoo! The Queen of Swords. Damn. I. I see you. I see you, Divine Masculine, and I ain't, I ain't mad at it. <laughs> I am not mad at it. Because the Queen of Swords doesn't take any shit. It's not about discussing what needs to be cut out. It's more about knowing exactly what does not belong in your existence any longer and just straight up cutting it out. No if, ands, or buts about it. All right then. Queen of Swords is coupled with. Wowie, wow, wow. Our last bit of mirroring. The Wheel of Fortune. So strong resemblance in mirroring here. Or I'm sorry, strong instances of mirroring here. Queen of Swords, Divine Masculine, you are cutting things out in favor of keeping the wheel turning towards greater fulfillment, greater authenticity, and your destiny. But you see, you're not, you're actively, see this, both, both the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine energies are taking an active role in what, they're, what they get from this Wheel of Fortune. So Divine Masculine, you are actively cutting things out that would keep you from benefiting, that would keep you, cutting things out that would keep you in this vicious cycle. Ten of Wands. Five of Swords. Okay? So much mirroring, guys. I mean, look at this. Death, death. Ten of Wands, Ten of Wands. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles. Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune. And there's a lot of feminine energy influencing both sides. Divine Feminine, you have the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Cups. Divine Masculine, you have the Empress and the Queen of Swords. Okay? Dri the, the Divine Feminine is driving in the ship here. The Divine Feminine has set the course. Divine Masculine, you are following through with it. That's beautiful, guys. All right. Moving into the relationship spread now between the twins at this current time. All right. Here we go, guys. For the Divine Masculine. Hawk. Excellent. For the Divine Feminine. 
butterfly. Oh, that's beautiful for the shadow dynamic. Turtle. Excellent. And the illuminated dynamic. <laughs> Vulture. All right. All right, guys. This is actually quite beautiful. I, I love it. And it makes perfect sense. Falls right in line. So for the Divine Masculine, we have Hawk. I just want to point out how much there is a ton of air energy here. Lots of mental stuff between the hawk, the vulture, and the butterfly, okay? Lots of mental change going on here. Hawk for the Divine Masculine. Watchful, all-seeing, messenger of divinity. The sharp eyes of the hawk watch every move. This keen-eyed bird has the ability to see every little detail as well as the bigger picture. When this card appears, fate has its eyes on you and the winds are shifting. It is said that the hawk carries news upon its wings and is sent from divinity itself to deliver it. The message should not be taken lightly. Though it may seem small or insignificant, it will eventually redirect your course. When in balance, hawk sees clearly and is intuitive. When out of balance, hawk sees too much and can be suspicious. To bring into balance, one must shift their perspective. Excellent. For the Divine Feminine, we have Butterfly. Delicate, yet hugely transformational. Butterfly, undergoing great change and transformation. The energy of the butterfly is with us during periods of transition. Since air is the element of the heart, this change usually involves relationships, or if you love your job, perhaps your career. Since transition is accompanied by some amount of discomfort, be extra patient and kind during this time, especially if the butterfly is you. Let solid friends and activities support you like a cocoon. Committing to one daily routine, a meal, practice, or prayer done at the same place and time will do wonders for lifting a butterfly's spirit. When in balance, butterfly is cheerful and graceful. When out of balance, butterfly is fragile and frustrated. To bring into balance, one must practice a daily routine. Excellent. For the shadow dynamic of the relationship, we have turtle. Turtle. Ancient soul. Grounded. Trusting. At home in the self. That's perfect. It's wonderful to be in the presence of a turtle personality. Like the beaver, the turtle has a strong relationship with the earth and water elements simultaneously. This helps to ground and connect them to the deeper truths of life, no matter where their travels lead them. Turtle energy is behind all great writers, storytellers, I'm sorry, writers and storytellers, as they collect life experiences under their shells for later use. The most potent turtle energy helps us close all the other books and begin to tell our own true tale. When in balance, turtle is peaceful and adventurous and protective. When out of balance, turtle slows down to a halt. To bring into balance, one must embark on an adventure. I sure say we're doing that, huh? <laughs> Finally, the illuminated dynamic of the relationship is none other than good old Vulture. I love this card. Vulture, guardian and purifier essence for rebalance. The vulture is perhaps the most misunderstood creature of all. This intriguing bird balances our ecosystem and prevents the spread of disease. It does the dirty work that no one else wants to do and cleans up our messes. The vulture appears when there is a situation that needs to be purified or brought back into balance. Remember, the vulture is greatly undervalued. What you thought was a mistake or tragedy is actually a blessing in disguise. When in balance, Vulture clarifies and reveals wisdom. When out of balance, Vulture is dramatic and aggressive. To bring into balance, one must clean your space or sage. I've got my sage right here, y'all. You know what? You know what? In honor of Vulture, I'm gonna go ahead and light my sage 
as we close out this reading, hold on, I just got to find a lighter. As we close out this reading, and I encourage you guys to do the same if you would like to join me, let's go ahead and all just light our sage. Mm -hmm. I know that's right, y'all. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh-oh. Oh, that's okay. I just don't want to set my cards on fire here, but there we go. Beautiful, guys. Excellent. So now we're going to close out the reading here with some oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle. All right. Just one message, please, Spirit. For the Twin Flame Collective at this time. Best message, please. Thank you so much, Spirit. There it is. Card number 44. Seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony. Whoopsies. Whoopsie poopsie. Okay, here we go. Card number 44. With the gift of the seventh ray, and I'm sorry, when the gift of the seventh ray enters your life, something new is being formed, something that will benefit your world. There may be in, an increased interest in magic, ceremony, and ritual for healing purposes. Resonating with high frequency light, uh, I'm sorry, high frequency violet light and the archangel Zodkiel, the seventh ray also helps transmute energy from lower to higher frequency. It is a spiritual cleansing agent that allows the truth of spiritual freedom, empowerment, and choice to be seen and felt, restoring hope and joy to the heart. Let's read a little bit more here. The seventh ray is very active upon the earth at this time. All of humanity is being affected by it. The seventh ray is the push-pull between the old and the new, that, that in-between worlds situation that we've been in. The life that has been and can no longer continue in that form and the new life that wants to evolve from the old. It honors traditions and ancestral wisdom that serve new life. When the seventh ray enters your life, you are asked to balance your attachment to what has been with an openness to the new. It is time to fearlessly question what has been, honor what continues to hold value for you and dismiss what no longer serves you. The seventh ray also creates form from invisible, intangible spiritual energy. These are the inspired solutions and synchronicities that seem to come out of nowhere. They are signs of the divine order happening. The seventh ray brings an alignment with that divine order. And the more you are willing to invoke and allow that energy to bless you, the more your life will align itself with the genius of creativity, solutions, and loving opportunities the universe wants to bring to your world. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Excellent, guys. This is really good. This really feels great. We're all moving in a really good direction. I know there's going, there is a lot of turmoil. People are feeling pretty unsettled. Um, but that's, that's the nature of making this major, massive shift, okay? Anyway, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal reading, go ahead and take advantage of my sale. All mirror readings are 20% off. We can either look at where you are in really, where you and your divine masculine or divine feminine are in relation to your journey. We can also look at if you are connecting with someone on a soul level, where the two of you are in relation to the relationship, or we can also look at where you are in relation to the balance of masculine and feminine energies within. Yeah, whatever you prefer, you just let me know. Either, either way, I love you guys so much. I hope you have a great week and I hope you're having a great weekend and I will see you in the morning for morning coffee. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.